Hi, I'm Harvey Broadhurst, um, animal keeper, former librarian, former hairdresser, and current exotics keeper. I mean, I've, I've always been interested, but when I started working at the Owl and Monkey Haven, it really awakened a big passion in me, and I really found it was something that I think I have to do for the rest of my life. One of the best things is, I mean, I don't have the most glamorous job in the world. I, I clean up, you know, a lot of mess from the monkeys and um, I have to feed them and things like that. And it's not, it's not that exciting. The real exciting thing is when you can be really hands on and do enrichment and uh, give them toys or, or, you know, just, just make them happy. But even when you're doing the dull stuff like the cleaning, you, you still manage to enjoy it because you're around monkeys. You know, you know, I'd be happy to work in a supermarket if I could work with monkeys in a supermarket. It's just monkeys are a prerequisite for my job. I do feel like a documentary subject, I really do. I suppose I am, though. OK, so I'm just getting some food ready for the marmosets that we're going to see in a minute. Uh, they really, really like these things, which are mealworms. Most of us are familiar with mealworms. They're little grubs of uh, beetles, beetle larva. And, um, yeah, they're marmosets' favourite sort of food. I'm also going to get them some grapes or something like that as well. Okay, so these are uh, common marmosets. We actually have, how many do we have? 16 of these at the Haven, um, but only two of them have wanted to come out today, uh, which is understandable because it's quite chilly. Um, these guys are found in South America, uh, sort of in parts of Brazil uh, and the Amazon rainforest, those sort of places. Uh, there are various types of marmoset, these are the most common common type, which is why they're called common marmosets. And um, yeah, they're one of the smallest, smallest monkeys in the world. The smallest monkey in the world is the pygmy marmoset, which is about slightly smaller than this guy here. They're very uh, skittish and jittery around, sort of all sorts of noises. When we have a plane flying overhead as well, they all rush inside because I think it's like a buzzard or a bird of prey coming to take them away. And that's just out of instinct, just because obviously they've never really had any real threat being born in captivity. Some peanut. All right, well, this is Nerid. She's a hybrid leaf eater monkey, uh, which means you wouldn't find her in the wild. She's very, very sort of unique. So she, the leaf eater uh, monkeys are a family of monkeys. They're not a species in particular. So uh, Nerid would have, her parents would have been two different species and they interbred, kind of like you get with dogs, a hybrid. And um, yeah, she's quite old actually. She's about 16 years old, which is um, nearing the end. Bless you, Nerid. You can see she's quite old, quite an elderly monkey. And this boy here, his name's Fudge. He's a different species. Is on that one? Uh, he's a Javan Langer, so he is a pure blood. And um, yeah, you can see they're quite noticeably different. Obviously, the colour 
You've got Fudge here, is a ginger colour, and then Nerid with her sort of grey coat. Here you go. Fudge is much younger. Fudge is about, I think he's seven years old. So he's a lot more active, he's got a lot more life left in him. But yeah, they're quite interesting monkeys actually. They have a, um, as their name suggests, leaf eaters. They uh, actually have a multi chambered stomach. So, because they eat loads and loads of different leaves in the wild, some of which would be poisonous and contain toxins. So, um, yeah, the, uh, the second chamber sort of actually neutralizes toxins so they can eat poisonous leaves and um, digest really, really tough leaves. Quite interesting monkeys. He's a Javan Langer, so he's from Java, uh, although I think they're found in the surrounding islands of that. Uh, she obviously wouldn't be found in the wild, but her parents would have been sort of from that stretch. Malaysia, Indonesia, those sort of places. So um, I think places like the Owl and Monkey Haven uh, are sort of necessary because there's so many unwanted primates, so many unwanted animals out there, uh, so many in need of a home or being rescued or uh, rehabilitation and all sorts. This is Martin, he's a white-throated capuchin. He's probably the most intelligent monkey we have here at the Owl and Monkey Haven. Martin here can get quite stressed sometimes. You might notice that um, on his forearms just there, he's actually missing some fur. Uh, that's where he scratches and, and um, pulls out his fur, sometimes when he gets uh, lonely. Uh, so we'd like to give him as much as possible to do to try and stop him from doing that, try and keep his mind occupied. We give him all sorts of challenges like bottles, uh, sort of Coke bottles, full up of seeds and nuts and uh, mealworms, grubs, stuff like that that he loves to eat with the lid screwed on. So he's got to unscrew the lid and um, yeah, get the food out. What are you doing? Capuchins are very, very intelligent monkeys. In the wild they've been observed uh, like getting grubs like millipedes and things like that and crushing them up, putting them on their back and that works as a, an insect repellent so it stops mosquitoes from biting them. They're also very, very clever at working things out and they've got very human-like hands. Um, because of their intelligence, they're often used in films, especially American media. Um, the monkey in Pirates of the Caribbean was a white-throated capuchin, just like Martin, and also Marcel from Friends. Okay, so these are the two Largovans. Uh, it's a mother and daughter. This is the daughter at the front. Her name's Summer, and she's six years old. We've got Razmea uh, just sitting behind her, just over there. Uh, she's actually the oldest primate we care for. She's 31. Come on, Raz. Or you. Summer here is a bit of a troublemaker. Uh, whenever we go in there, she'll come over and slap us around the head, go swinging off again. Um, she's a bit too playful for us to go in there, so we don't. We tend to avoid going in whenever, whenever we can. Uh, in the wild, they'd be found. Largibans, you're found in Sumatra, so Indonesia, and uh, you can hear gibbons more often than spot them. When I went to Borneo last year. I um, could hear some gibbons from, from where the village I was staying. They were sort of in a big, big hill, and you can just hear them. You don't often see them because they're so, so fast. These guys are incredibly fast, and they can actually leap nine meters before having to grab onto something else, which is quite extraordinary. So here at the Haven, we've got a monkey called Jebra. He's a red-tailed Gwenon, or red-tailed monkey, um, and he was, well, he's the only monkey that we have who was born in the wild. Uh, currently and what happened originally was he was his mother was obviously killed because he was sold as a pet in Israel and what the uh, traders do is they kill the mothers and take the babies because the babies are obviously cute and uh, nobody wants to buy a fully grown monkey but um, yeah he was originally kept in Israel with a family and they uh, brought him up as sort of alongside them hand reared we call it and uh, a lot of zoos do it but it's, it's quite difficult when it's private primate ownership because a lot of people don't know what they're doing with monkeys. As I said before, they're very psychologically delicate animals. And anyway, Jebra was, yeah, he was brought up around these people and then eventually seized because it was illegal to keep him. And he was sent to uh, Twycross Zoo up in the Midlands where he was paired with a female Gwenon. He got on with her really, really well until she unfortunately died. And uh, any future attempts to introduce him to other monkeys or other Gwenons was met with aggression from Jeb. He'd get really aggressive, try and beat them up and all sorts. So then he get, got sent to us where we keep him and he has to be kept on his own now because obviously we don't want him beating anybody else up. And um, because of that, 
because of where he was brought up around humans, he's very unpredictable uh, and can be quite dangerous. He's one of the, uh, the monkeys that we never ever go in with just because of how dangerous he is. He's got very sharp teeth and he often threatens us in the mornings. But despite that, he does love being tickled and all sorts. He's probably, the, at the same time, the friendliest monkey we have. He loves coming over for hugs. He loves holding your hand and all sorts. He's, he's very, very, he's a gorgeous little thing, but he's just so messed up because of what humans did to him. And that's just bringing him up as a human and not bringing him up as a monkey. And that's the problem. That's the problem that there is in the UK. And well, everywhere, all these monkeys that have been brought up in zoos and all sorts, they have no idea how to be a monkey. They just know how to be a zoo animal or how to be a human if they've been brought up around humans. So it's difficult, very, very difficult. And uh, that's why we, places like this exist. So we can uh, house monkeys like that. <laughs>